Hi, my name is Harlan. Welcome to the H Metrical Mechanical Engineering Channel. During the year 2018, in the province of Ontario alone, 7,000 structure fires were recorded, of which there were 722 injuries, 81 fatalities, and a total property loss of $732.7 million. By structure fires, we mean fires that occur in industrial, commercial, and institutional buildings. This highlights the importance of fire sprinkler systems in buildings. Today, our topic is about the layout of fire sprinkler systems. And this can be best explained using an example. A manufacturing plant in Ontario is going to construct a building expansion adjacent to the west side of its existing process building. The floor area is 3,087 square feet. The occupancy hazard classification according to NFPA 13 is Ordinary Hazard Group 2. Lay out the sprinklers. So in this drawing you will see on the right the existing building with its existing fire sprinkler system and on the left side with a encircled here with red is the process building expansion. From Annex A.4.5.6 in FPA 13, buildings adjacent to a primary structure can be protected by extending the fire sprinkler system from the primary structure. From the area density curve, NFPA 13 standard for the installation of fire sprinkler systems. This is a copy of the standard. We determine the density based on an area of 1,500 square feet of a or for ordinary hazard occupancy group 2. So density 0.2 GPM per square feet at 1,500 square feet of area operation. So from the area density curve you can see this point in here which is uh, shown uh, pointed on by the red arrow. And from the same standard Table 10.2.4.1 for pendant and upright sprinklers, the maximum coverage for ordinary hazard classification is 130 square feet. See the one encircled in red. From the same table, the maximum spacing for these sprinklers for the same building occupancy classification is 15 feet. The standard also says that the maximum distance from the sprinkler to the wall shall not exceed one half of the maximum spacing between sprinklers. Hence, since we choose 15 feet as a spacing maximum, our for the ordinary hazard, the maximum distance from the sprinkler to the wall is 7 feet and 6 inches. And from the same standard, for the same for standard pendant and upright sprinklers, the minimum distance between the sprinkler to a wall is 4 inches. And the minimum spacing between sprinklers for standard pendant and upright sprinklers is 6 feet unless baffles will be provided to protect the actuating elements. Examine closely the roof framing plan of the proposed building expansion and note the location of the beams and the joists. The branch lines will always run perpendicular to bar joists or purlins. So in this structural drawing, we can see that we have the beams here, B1, B4, B5, B6, and uh, we have B3, B2, B1 in here, and the uh, joist here, you have an open web steel joist, so the branch lines will run perpendicular to the joist here, like this one here. 
That's why this is the shape. And the cross main will be perpendicular to the branch line. So the building expansion area can be divided into two rectangles for ease in analysis. The first one is the upper, which is 20 and a half feet by 61 feet 4 inches. And the lower one is 27 feet 2 inches by 67 feet and 4 inches. Consider first the upper rectangle. The branch lines will be along the length of 61 feet 4 inches. And de determine the number of branch lines needed in this rectangle. So the number of branch lines will be its width divided by the maximum spacing. So 20.5 divided by 15 feet, we have 1.37. So round up to the next whole number, we have 2. So we have two branch lines. And the spacing between the branch lines, or the distance between the branch lines, will be 20.5 feet divided by 2, 10.25 feet. So let's say 10 feet and 6 inches. Question. Is it okay? Yes, it's okay. Because the maximum spacing is 15. And the minimum spacing is 6 feet. So this is okay. Determine the number of sprinklers along the branch line. So the length is 61 feet and 4 inches, the length of the rectangle. And divided by 15 feet, the maximum spacing, we have 4.09. And run up to the next whole number, say 5. Determine the spacing between the sprinklers along the branch line. So it will be the length, which is 61 feet and 4 inches, divided by the number of sprinklers, which we earlier determined as 5. So we have 12.27 feet, say 12. Is it okay? Yes, 12 is okay because the maximum is 15 feet and the minimum spacing is 6 feet. And the area of coverage of the sprinkler, based on what uh, we have obtained, is uh, 12 feet by 10 feet and 6 inches, which is 126 square feet, which is less than 130 square feet the maximum coverage for each sprinkler in the design area. So, uh, since this is less than 130, so this complies with the NFPA requirement for the maximum coverage per sprinkler. So, the, calculate the distance from the last branch line to the wall. So, 20 and a half minus 10 and a half feet all over 2 will be 5 feet. It's less than 7 feet and 6 inches. So, that is okay. It complies with the NFPA requirement. And calculate the distance from the last sprinkler along the branch line to the wall. 61 feet 4 inches minus 4 times 12 all over 2. We have 6 feet and 8 inches which is less than 7 feet and 6 inches which also complies with the NFPA 13 requirement for the maximum distance from the sprinkler to the wall. Recheck the area of coverage for the sprinklers near the corners as follows. Area of coverage, we have 5 feet plus 5 feet and 3 inches quantity and 6 feet and 8 inches plus 6 feet and the result will be 129.87 square feet which is less than 130 square feet which also complies with the standard. So lay out the sprinklers in the 20 and a half by 61 feet 4 inch rectangle. So this will now be your sprinklers. And this will be the branch lines. And this will be the cross main. So that will, and you have these distances, sir, from the wall, from the ends. Okay. Now we go to the next rectangle, the lower one, which is 27 feet 2 inches and 61 feet or 67 feet. 4 inches here. They determine the number of branch lines needed in the rectangle. So it will be the width divided by the maximum spacing. 27 feet 2 inches divided by 15. We have 1.8. Round up to the next whole number, we have 2. Determine the distance between two branch lines. We have the width divided by the number of branch lines, which is 2. So 27 feet 2 inches divided by 2, 13.58, let's say 13 feet, which is, it just doesn't exceed 15 feet, 
and it's more than six feet, right? So it's okay for now. Determine the number of sprinklers along the branch line. So the length divided by maximum spacing, we have 67 feet and 4 inches. Divided by 15, we have 4.49, and we round up to the next whole number, which is 5. Determine the spacing between the sprinklers along the branch line. So length will be number of length divided by number of sprinklers, 67 feet, 4 inches divided by 5. The result will be 13.47 feet, say, just to be safe, 12 feet. The area of coverage per sprinkler is 13 feet by 12 feet, which results to 156 square feet. And since it is greater than 130 square feet, it doesn't comply with the NFPA 13 requirement. So therefore, what we are going to do is uh, we will increase the number of branch lines to 3. So from 2 to 3. And then we will determine the spacing. So the width divided by number of branch lines, so 27 feet 2 inches divided by 3. Result is 9.06 feet, so say 9 feet. And the area of coverage per sprinkler will probably be 9 feet by 12 feet, which will result in 108 square feet, less than 130 square feet. So this complies now with the NFPA requirement for maximum coverage per sprinkler. Calculate the distance from the last branch line to the wall. Okay, So distance from the branch line to the wall 27 feet 2 inches minus 2 times uh, 9 feet, the all over 2 will be 4 feet and 7 inches, which is less than 7 feet and 6 inches. And this is okay, right? The minimum distance from the wall to the sprinkler is 4 inches, maximum 7 feet and 6 inches. Calculate the distance from the last sprinkler along the branch line. To the wall 67 feet 4 inches minus 4 times 12 feet all over 2 you will have 9 feet and 8 inches which is greater than 7 feet and 6 inches and this doesn't comply with the NFPA requirement for maximum distance from a sprinkler to the wall so what we will do is we will increase the number of sprinklers along the brush lines to 6 and then recalculate the spacing so length divided by number of sprinklers, 67 feet, 4 inches, divided by 6, the result will be 11.22, say 11 feet. And the coverage per sprinkler will now be 9 feet times 11 feet, which is 99 feet, less than 130 feet. So it complies now with the NFPA requirement for the maximum coverage per sprinkler. And then we recalculate the distance from the last sprinkler along the branch line to the wall. 67 feet and 4 inches minus 5 times 11 feet. All over 2, the result will be 6 feet and 1 inch, which is less than 7 feet and 6 inches. And this complies with the NFPA 13 requirement. Then we recheck the area of coverage for the sprinklers near the corners again as follows. So 4 feet 7 inches plus uh, 4 feet 6 inches quantity times the quantity of 6 feet 1 inch plus 5 feet 6 inches. The area of coverage will be 105.22 for the sprinklers at the corners which is less than 130 square feet and it also complies with the NFPA 13 requirement for the maximum coverage per sprinkler. So we will lay out now the sprinklers in the 27 feet 2 inch by 67 feet and 4 inches rectangle. So here, that will be the layout of your sprinklers. So you have the distance that we have calculated, 6 feet and 1 inch from here, 4 feet 7 inches from here. And also this that's the same distance from here. So. Uh, Thank you for watching and uh, I again would like to invite you for more video tutorials at H. Machikon Mechanical Engineering Channel.